guys, this is 5 Minute Nerd and I'm here to tell you some useful stuff about Dungeons and Dragons, especially about the job of dungeon mastering. A few weeks ago a user called Sentai Bionicle asked me if I could talk about the process of preparing for a session of Dungeons and Dragons. And honestly that's a great question if you want to get into being a dungeon master yourself. Because if you're not a godly D&D genius with photographic memory, Chances are, you gotta do a little bit of preparation before you face your players. I talked about being over and under prepared in another video before, but let me tell you exactly how I do my weekly pre-session preparations. This is in no way meant to be the absolute guide on how to prepare for your games, but this is how I do it and maybe you'll get something useful out of it. Number 1. The Story D&D is basically a storytelling game, but where does that story come from? While it's definitely a shared effort between you and your players, it is you who has to build the framework for that. If you're in the middle of running an ongoing campaign, the overarching main story should already be set in motion. Now it is your job as the Dungeon Master to guide your players along that story and drive the adventure forward in every session. That's why you gotta plan so-called plot hooks into the game. Plot hooks work a little bit like quests or side quests in an RPG video game. They are basically triggers to pull your players into smaller storylines or to push the main story forward. A plot hook could be a peasant that needs the players to do a certain job for him. It could be a mysterious corpse on a sidewalk, a ghost that whispers to our heroes at night. Anything your players could follow up on to find an adventure. Whenever I come up with an interesting plot hook, I put it down on the list. When I go into preparation, I take some of those that seem fitting and put them aside in case I can bring them into the game somehow. For the organization of the story and the plot hooks, I use a program called Scrivener, which is a writing tool with a lot of useful functions for dungeon masters, like a tree structure or hyperlinks, but you can make any writing tool work. Google Docs, Microsoft Office or a good old notebook should do the trick. Number 2. Locations and Dungeons I like to support my games with some visual clues, considering that my group mostly plays online via Roll20.net, so I constantly scout the internet for some useful maps of towns or dungeons that I could throw into my game. If I'm feeling fancy and I've got a bit of time, I sometimes draw whole dungeons myself, which can be a lot of work, but very rewarding when you bring it to the table. For the towns, I pin down the most important spots beforehand, the rest happens on the fly. Same goes for the dungeons, I write down some traps and puzzles, but most of the action isn't actually pre-planned in detail. Number 3. NPCs and Monsters Important non-player characters will find their way into my virtual notebook, where I write down their names and appearance and even some bits of dialogue if I really want them to happen in the game. For the upcoming battles, I always look for fitting enemies in advance. I personally just don't like spending minutes at the table looking for just the right enemy in a monster's handbook, so I pick a few good ones out before the session starts. My players love spellcasters, so I always make sure to have some of those in the mix. Additionally, I've got a bunch of random spells lined up to throw into the game, even if the monsters shouldn't be able to cast them. My players will never know. Number 4. Loot in each session I fear that one moment, when your players just slaughtered the beast and they look at you like, so, where's the treasure? Well, there's this, this bag of coins, I guess, and the sword. Getting loot should be a rewarding feeling after success and it's not that easy to get that right and keep it balanced. Which is why I don't trust that random factor at this point that much. I pick out a few cool items in advance, some treasure and some gold pieces and let coincidence do the rest. Number 5. Being prepared for everything. The greatest challenge about dungeon mastering is that you'll never really know where your players will go and which route they will take. Of course, sometimes you'll get lucky. You'll end the session in the middle of a dungeon or right in the new town, which gives you a lot of time to flesh out exactly these parts for your next gaming night. But you won't always be that lucky. Your players might go completely off the rails to some part of the world that you didn't even think of. No names, no towns, no maps. You're fucked. Nah, you're not. There are a few ways to tackle that problem. First, be spontaneous and go random. There are hundreds of ways to create random dungeons, random towns, random encounters, even whole random adventures. Make use of the random tables from the Dungeon Master's Guide or the internet. Second, take whatever you prepare and sell it to your players anyways. That huge forest dungeon you made last night with all the traps and puzzles, boom, it's a bloody castle now. The encounters you set up for the mountain pass, put them in the castle too. 
Your players will never know what you actually had in mind when you planned that stuff, as long as you sell it well to them. And frankly, that's the whole deal of preparation. If you're spontaneous and good with ideas on the fly, you won't have to do that much work before the sessions. If you're a planner though and you love going into details, go ahead and write everything down that might happen at the table. Find a style that suits you and your game and don't ever let it feel like work. You are the dungeon master and you gotta have just as much fun with this as the players. I hope this was a little bit helpful to you. If you want me to talk about something specific next time, uh, just write it in the comments. And don't forget to push all the crazy buttons down there. All of them.